So, welcome back. We are on the, our last session, but not the least important, of course. It is just straight to the center of our, <laughs> our conference. Actually, it is open and free software and open hardware application. So, we have the first presentation. It is a group of auto, actually, Dillian and Goran. So, please, just... Um, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. So, um... I just need my presentation. Um, in the meantime, I'm really happy to be here again. Um, I'm coming from uh, Faculty of Philosophy, uh, Department of Psychology, and today we will present you um, application that we use in our studies, uh, which is uh, developed to collect experience sampling data. So as you can see, uh, the title of this talk is Example, a free user-friendly app for collecting experience sampling data. Yeah. So um, basically what will I here present today is, uh, I would say, a nice example of uh, human-machine interaction and the interdisciplinary research. So. Um, why we needed uh, an app like this, why we actually uh, are moving towards computers and towards technology. So um, moving survey research from lab to online setting uh, now enables researchers with several benefits. Um, for example, online surveys allow us to have access to more diverse populations. Um, as an example, a uh, recent report showed that 84% uh, of American adults use internet, um, while in the population of older adults, uh, which is the fastest growing group of internet users, slightly above 50% people are using it. Um, online data collection uh, enables us to reduce the biases of the researcher being present so um, in the lab. Uh, for example, together with the participant. It also decreases the cost of uh, data collection. So now we actually can collect um, huge amounts of data in a relatively short time. Um, it also reduces human errors and standardizes administration. Um, it is proven to be the same. The data collection uh, that's conducted online is of same quality um, in some studies as traditional methods in terms of reliability and validity. So, um, in, uh, when we talk about this technological development which supports social science research, um, probably uh, the fastest uh, developing field is the uh, smartphone uh, development uh, field because um, we all use smartphones today and um, Psychological research using smartphones is increasing uh, tremendously. Um, these smartphones offer us a variety of really uh, cool technical characteristics. So uh, they have uh, now really large memory capacities, uh, uh, good processors, operating systems. Uh, we can also collect some onboard sensor data, uh, just like uh, we can um, collect data on GPS, tracking visual and audio output, uh, haptic um, output, motor output, etc. Um, so maybe 30 or 40 years ago in psychology, um, a couple of people started developing a new uh, line of uh, research. It's called experience sampling methodology. And uh, experience sampling belongs to the broader group of techniques, which is today known as ambulatory assessment techniques. And they enable us to collect data on everyday behavior, um, on our emotions, on our behavior, on our cognition. Um, that also um, allow us to gain some insight into the dynamics of people's cognitive emotional processes. And we can also investigate some characteristics that influence these dynamics. So um, now when we combine, so we can combine actually this experience sampling methodology with smartphones and um, using smartphones in this, uh, in this sense is only one way. So we can, uh, we can apply experience sampling methodology with some other, of course, devices. So it doesn't have to be, a, you can use it, you can do it with paper and pencil, but smartphones um, are really uh, um, good because um, these are the advantages. So we have, 
relatively flexible control over the whole process of data collection. Um, we can overview the whole process of collection of data collection in real time, and we also can have some information about the behavior of our participants, uh, for example, like their movement or communication or something else. We can also, um, based on the completion time, we can determine if our participants were intentively um, inattentively completing questions, whether they were skipping some questions, what was their behavior in general. Um, we have relatively easy access to a variety of behavioral data without asking people to report on them. Um, we can collect the data in real time, and it's what is really important, we um, collect data repeatedly, so we apply the same procedure several times per day over several days. So, uh, which is uh, really, um, uh, really uh, informative about people's behavior. On the other hand, I have to mention some of the drawbacks of experience sampling. It is very time consuming for the participant because the person who is uh, participating in the study has to repeatedly uh, dedicate time. It is short time during the day, but still it has to be collected uh, several times uh, per day. Usually we collect data for at least seven days. So it is a certain burden for respondent. There is also a possibility of selection bias because uh, respondents can miss uh, assessment at the response of their current mood. So we don't have the um, we can't actually control 100% behavior of our respondent, but still uh, it is much better than when we apply only uh, paper and pencil. And um, also there is uh, the order and the content of the questions, and these repeated assessments can induce the reactivity of respondents. So uh, therefore we have to balance questions and we have to carefully select the items. So we have to uh, select only small number of items to cover as much as we can, because otherwise people will be really bored <laughs> doing it every day. Um, so now I will just briefly um, tell some of the challenges in smartphone-based experience sampling. Um, so as you know, like uh, we all have smartphones and they uh, differ a lot. Um, so uh, there is the heterogeneity of platforms, so uh, there, there are some uh, variations in both software and hardware components. Um, it's costly, uh, so sometimes researchers consider using participants' own um, devices during the study instead of providing them with uh, their own. Um, it has to be um, developed in a way that it doesn't require uh, like some sophisticated programming skills uh, because uh, for example, I am the user of the, uh, I'm the researcher using the application, so I should have the app that doesn't uh, require of me to do some, some programming. So it has to be relatively easy. Um, there are also uh, biases in sampling and difficulties in, in recruitment of participants. So um, some studies show that adoption of smartphones is slower in people um, of lower socioeconomic status. Uh, in people coming from developing countries, um, introverted, mentally ill, older people, and, and um, some other groups. So, um, and also certain people are afraid that it will invade their privacy. So we also have to take this into account. Um, the quality of collected data depends, of course, on the willingness of the participant to collect the data and uh, to, to provide the data. Um, it also uh, depends on the responsibility of the of the respondents. So, I can tell you from our own experience when we were when we collected data. So it happens all the time. People forget their phone, or they uh, just leave it in some other room, or um, and then uh, they miss the assessment. So it um, it influences, of course, um, the duration of of data collection. Um, some people also purposely change their behavior when they know that they are uh, participating in the study, which is rare, but still it can happen. And also, um, if you, for example, are uh, running study on people of uh, some, on a group of people who are employed, usually we all know most of the people have like two phones, one for business and one for their private uh, purposes. So um, then you don't have like the real 
uh, insight into their behavior because they're using two phones. And um, on the other side, you also have uh, one challenge for uh, researchers because uh, data that are pulled out of this, uh, of studies like this, are really complex, so they require um, pretty, um, <laughs> pretty, uh, I would say, sophisticated statistical skills because we uh, have to apply multi-level modeling to analyze data like this. And finally, there are some ethical issues. As I said, people are sometimes uh, afraid that, they, that it will invade their privacy. So now I will just, uh, so now you will so see how this uh, application that we developed looks like. So it's called Xsample. This is the logo that you can see when you uh, open Google Play. Uh, it's Android-based application. It was developed um, as part of the previously <laughs> of the previous project that lasted for ten years, as you all know. Um, but the, what is important is that it is freely available to researchers. So uh, when we started, when we wanted to uh, do experience sampling studies, we first look for uh, some available apps and most of them you have to pay for uh, to use them. So that's why <clears throat> at the end we developed our uh, own application. It is really configurable, it's user friendly, so it doesn't require actually uh, programming knowledge. And um, it serves as a tool for tracking emotions and actions of respondents. So um, when, you are, when you open the, the platform, you have two sections. One is called poll section, which is actually dedicated to uh, the survey itself, and the other is examinee section. So in the poll section, you configure the items that you will administer to the, to the respondent, and you create the survey. So uh, you create the labels of the survey, you administer, uh, you add the disclaimer text, you, add, you set the number of days that people have to uh, fill in the questionnaires. While in the examinee section, um, you have information about the participants. So uh, you have to enter uh, the participants manually in the, in the platform. Uh, code or ID of the respondent is mandatory while other information are um, optional. And only those respondents who are, whose codes are entered into the platform are actually eligible to take part in the study. Um, and you also have to assign uh, each respondent to the poll that you are currently running. So, uh, apart from the items that you will actually administer to the people, what this uh, app collects, <coughs> sorry, so we have the number of incoming and outgoing calls, but not the content of the, of the calls. And we also have the number of incoming and outgoing text messages, not messages that are um, exchanged using Viber, WhatsApp, or something else. We also uh, can collect data on, from GPS, and if Google Fit is installed on the, on the smartphone, we can pull that data out. And finally, uh, we can give uh, the participants the feedback on their emotions and mood after they participated in the study. So, um, this was, I thought that this, is, this was the easiest way to uh, present how it looks like. So I will just briefly go through these sections. So you can see examinee section and the poll section. In the examinee section, you add the participant to the participant pool. There are two options. You can use Gmail account or you can use ID. So uh, it, of course, uh, it's up to the participant. Uh, some people prefer Gmail or uh, email account, some people prefer ID. Next. Then you have to assign the participant to the pool. So you have to, you have, you, you have to <coughs> um, select among available pools that are created and assign the participant to the pool manually. Sorry, <coughs> I don't know <coughs> what's happening with me. Um, we also, as I said, we can collect, you can see that we can uh, see the number of incoming and outgoing text messages per day. We have GPS log, but this feature of application needs further testing. This is the most difficult um, part of the implementation. 
If installed on device, it collects Google feed data. This is new feature of the app, and uh, we still didn't use it in real studies, so it has to be tested in real time, but it, it exists. Um, we have information on mobile data in bytes, uh, number of incoming and outgoing calls per day, and browser log. This is something that we actually never uh, in, used so far. This is possible, but we were never interested in that. You can, uh, you can track it, but um, so far we didn't use it. So that's about the examinee section. Now we go to the poll section. <laughs> Oh, sorry, you can also see the answers of participants uh, separately. Um, finally, you have, so no, uh, here you have to uh, create the poll and you set the number of days that people have to complete and you put the disclaimer text. You set the uh, uh, number of periods in poll during one day, so it can uh, differ between one and whatever you need. You define the questions and we have options to, we can uh, set several types of questions, radio or which is scale, text, question, slider and visual items. And you also can assign items to specific polls. Finally, when our uh, participants are done, you can give them feedback on mood and emotions. You select the items uh, from which you want to select the feedback. So finally, how does the participant see? This is really brief. When you are a user, you first have the disclaimer text where you have to, of course, give consent to all the data that will be collected. Then you sign in with your code. Again, you have to agree with terms and conditions before start answering, and this happens every single time. So you always have to say, I do, or I agree. And this is the example of the screen that you can see on your phone. So this is an example item from one of the study that will start. It's about PMS. And uh, so basically, um, you have the, the respondent has to answer uh, the question and it goes automatically to the next one. And there is also a really nice feature that one participant can participate in several studies. So uh, if same participant is assigned to several polls, he or she has to collect, uh, select the um, survey that uh, will uh, participate in. And this is the last thing, so uh, people usually worry about security and privacy. Data are stored on a safe server and they are used exclusively for research purposes, so only researchers who are running the study have uh, access to the data. A uh, participant, as I said, has to be entered manually in the system, so it's not like some other apps where you just download them and that's it, and then you can use it. Um, app runs quietly in the background, except when participant completes the survey, and if participant wants to withdraw from the study, it simply uninstalls the app and that's it. And finally, I just um, that's it. I just wanted to mention one thing. It's uh, so uh, I have it here because I installed it also on my uh, phone. So basically, I'm receiving push notifications every day to complete the study, and um, uh, you can uh, they can be randomly or assigned or in some fixed terms. So it depends on your needs. So that's it. Thank you. Excellent, Lillian, and thank you for a great presentation. We are a little bit of short of time, but we have a question from the audience. Is there any question? If not, we have a Nadice here. Uh, thank yes. you. Thank you, Lillian, for a very nice presentation. My question is, how are participants motivated when they use this kind of technology? Are they more motivated than standard questionnaires and tools? Or, or you have to motivate them somehow? It depends. Um, well, uh, sometimes people are really motivated to uh, uh, participate in a study like this. Uh, for example, this feature that we introduced, this uh, feedback for uh, emotions and mood, uh, it was developed so we can actually motivate our participants somehow because people are usually interested uh, in receiving some feedback. 
Um, it depends, we, for example, for this uh, PMS study, we hope that uh, females would be uh, very uh, interested in participating because it's a problem that um, occupies a lot of women. But, um, so it depends. Uh, you can also use some other incentives like uh, uh, paying participants or uh, something else, but uh, we hope that this uh, feedback option and this novelty of, of the technology will influence positively uh, participants. But um, we have to be honest, after some time, they are a bit tired. So um, we have to motivate them. OK, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, just a short question from me also. A wonderful presentation. And uh, of course, as far as I know, you told me that this application is available, yes? Yes. So uh, it's free for researchers. It's exclusively for research purposes, but it's free. And uh, people who are interested in uh, using it should uh, contact us and uh, we can then provide them like, with a short uh, um, tutorial how to use it. It's really, really easy. And that was actually the point to, to uh, have a software that's really easy to use. So it doesn't have, you don't have to call the programmer all the time. And I'm just a bit curious, uh, afterwards, the um, statistics and analyzing the data, uh, you mentioned that you're not looking yet into the browser logs. And how about GPS? Or... Um, so, so, okay, we collected uh, uh, data for one study, uh, roughly about 200 participants. Um, those data are still not completely explored, so uh, we have some, we have data collected uh, about their movement, but we still didn't actually analyze it, so um, it has to be, uh, we will definitely, we will do it, so. What was the idea about? Uh, so, for example, the... people, let's say, we can say that people who are extroverted, for example, they would, um, visit several places during the day or they would be uh, in the move like mm -hmm. more than other people for example or you can um, you can be interested in health habits for yeah, example actually the, the reason why i'm asking you, uh, you the, for the phone calls and messages you were mm -hmm. just counting the number yes and for the gps you're tracking the location not only the the different places the number of different places or uh, um, mileage kilometers it's at, in this, at this moment, uh, we have the amount of, uh, of movement, let's say. So we still, uh, that's the plan to develop this GPS tracking more precisely. Uh, so we can actually uh, combine information on their movement and the locations they are, they are visiting. For now, this is still not available, but it depends, so uh, still, in the future we will do it, probably. Excellent, all that's the reason I ask, is it available? Thank you very much. So, Thank you. Okay. And if there are any additional questions, we will put it later, after, afterwards.